Hey guys, I'm Annie She Designs, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to use commercial patterns for sewing. Now, usually my videos are all cosplay specific or I try to be, but in this particular one, this can go for anyone who's trying to learn how to use commercial patterns. The example I'll be using today is this one right here, which is a Berta pattern. I've been tasked by my local theater to make the dress for our main character, uh, Maria, from the show Sound of Music. So I'm used to using my own patterns I make myself with my own drafting skills. So I actually have not used a commercial pattern in a long time. So this was the perfect opportunity for me to put together a little how to use a commercial pattern video for you guys. So here's a look at the front of the pattern. We'll be making the green dress. And here's the back. Now let's look at it up close. So as you can see, each piece is labeled. We have a top and a bottom for the green dress. And here are the technical flat images of each piece as well. We're gonna be needing those a lot. This is the style number of the pattern, 7870. And over here we have the sizes. We're gonna be making a size 12 for our actress. And down at the bottom, the pattern does tell us that there is seam allowance included on it. So we don't have to worry about that later. Now on the back. We have a description of what the skirt and style is like, as well as the style number and brand again. So the skirt tops and um, aprons are all labeled. Here's our technical flats again. Tells you which piece you're making. And as well as the yardage needed per piece. So depending on what letter you're doing, this is how much yardage you'll need. And this here tells you what fabric and notions you're going to need from buttons, interfacing, zippers, and the fabrics, of course. So here we have the buttons, the zippers, and all the other little pieces. Yeah, that's the basic of the back. Now let's open up the pattern to see what's inside. Here we have the instructions page. This has the instructions for each piece you might be making, depending on the letter. They're pretty important for putting together the garment when you're learning how to sew, because it has all the instructions on how to piece everything. There's quite a few uh, instructions here, but don't worry. It's in three languages. You don't have to read everything on there. And it depends on which letter you're making. This chart up here shows you which pattern pieces you'll need to make each garment all by letter and by number. So then you have to take the tissue and find each number to now cut out. Looks like I found the pieces I'm gonna to need to make the bodice. Let's start to cut this out. As you can see as I'm cutting, I am going to cut around the entire garment. I'm not cutting around uh, a certain size or anything, I'm cutting the whole entire piece out. Very carefully. Here's a look at the cutout pattern piece. So, as you can see, it has a bunch of labels. It tells you the number, which we just found, what piece it is, and how many pieces of it to cut. As well, it tells you the style number and the seam allowance you're going to be sewing with. Over here, it displays some information about the sizing, what size person can fit which size. Here we have an adjustment line. This is where you can make things longer or shorter depending on the person you're fitting it to. This line here is the center front and also displays where you'd put the buttons and buttonholes when it comes time. We also have a facing line here, meaning it's gonna be folded along there on the actual fabric. There's the waist marking, button markings, and now the different sizes. There are several sizes in this particular pattern, and each one is shown with a different kind of dotted line. Not every pattern does this particular detail. Usually the dotted lines are all the same. This one's just extra helpful. I've actually never seen this before, so this is pretty cool. In our case, we're making size 12, meaning we are following the innermost line. In most cases, you would cut off all the excess and just cut out the size 12. But in this case, it's not my pattern. It belongs to the theater, so we're going to ignore that. We also have the dart marked over here, so let's keep that in mind and we'll get back to that later. 
So let's get ready to cut this out. First, I am because I'm not cutting into my pattern piece, I'm going to fold it and tape it down. I do not want to ruin it as it doesn't, again, does not belong to me, it belongs to the theater. So I'm taping it to the innermost line and following it carefully. Now I'm going to start pinning it to the fabric. Now my fabric's folded in half, so it might have said two pieces on there. This will get me the two pieces out of it. If it said to cut four, then I'd be cutting it twice on this, on this laid out fabric. There we go, all nice and pinned. Let's cut it out. Now I'm being very careful as I do this because I can't necessarily fold everything back. So I'm having to look underneath the tissue and fold back as I go in order for it to sit in the right place. Again, it's pretty difficult because I am following the innermost line. In some cases, you'd be following the outside line, which makes this a whole lot easier. Typically when cutting out a pattern, you're just following the lines and cutting around the piece. Or if you have to do what I'm doing, cutting under the piece a little bit. Some parts are much easier than others because the different sizing lines don't come into effect, like the hem in the front, as you can see here. The armhole, again, I'm just following the line by looking underneath the tissue. Luckily, tissue is pretty see-through, so you can do this not super easily, but a little easier than if it was a solid piece of paper. There we go, we got the armhole cut out. Now the side. Again, a little easier, I'm following along the line and fold, uh, I fold lines. Now we're gonna get to the little tricky part, which is the dart. I told you we'd come back to that. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning along that part, the dart that I need, the one that matches the dotted lines, and because I can see through it, I'm going to trace along it. Now in some cases you'd use tracing paper for that, but most people who are starting out don't own tracing paper, and I personally don't have any. So don't worry about the tracing paper and tracing wheel combination. A piece of chalk will do you justice here. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to try folding it this way, but guess what? It won't work, so I'm going to have to fold in the other direction afterwards. Yeah, there we go. I figured it out. So I'm going to fold it over, and now it's going to start to line up with the other line I've drawn. Unfortunately, you can't see the line very well, but that's a good sign because that means that you won't see the chalk on the final garment. Keep in mind, this is the inside of the fabric, so I'm not drawing and cutting while it's facing the right side of the fabric. Everything you're seeing is the opposite side, which is why it doesn't look very strongly colored. It's pretty pale looking because it's not the side that was printed on. There we go. There are all of our pieces now cut out, which I've done most of them off camera for you. I hope all this information was rather helpful for those of you who are trying to learn how to use commercial patterns. As you can see next to me, I have the finished garment right here. So I went from this green image right here to being able to make this right here, which is exactly what the costume designer at the theater wanted. Essentially the green dress just in this fabric. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. and. Uh, See you in the next video.